So here's new redstone dust revision and it's using these addressable LEDs. Unlike the older version where it uses an LED, a shocky diode, and a current limiting resistor. The new design has some advantages and disadvantages. The biggest advantage being able to control the brightness of each block. Also when wiring everything up, it's a bit simpler since all you have to do is add the wires in order to make the connections. Another advantage is that these LEDs can be powered down to three volts. Unlike the shock heat design, which needs a stable five volt source in order to complete a full redstone signal. There are also quite a bit of disadvantages. The redstone line can only be linear, meaning it only moves in one direction in order to get a signal out from these LEDs. A microcontroller needs to read the data being outputted, or you can also use a photoresistor to see if the LED is on or off. Although the microcontroller in this block here is able to send the signal pretty well, the microcontroller that receives that data sometimes has issues with reading. And so right now in the code, it's sending data in order to clear the LEDs and make sure they're off. And it's doing this consistently every 100 milliseconds. And due to packet loss, sometimes it will read that differently. And so that's when this door will open and then close, correcting itself. The module uses one byte for each color, so one byte for green, one byte for red, and one byte for blue. The microcontroller creates an array of bytes, and so it will create a strand and send that strand out. The module will subtract the first three bytes of that code, keep it in its memory, and send out the rest of the leading code. Once it reaches the next module, the module will do the same, where it reads the first three bytes, keep it, and then send out the rest. Once the data reaches the microcontroller for reading, the serial of the microcontroller is used. When initializing the serial, you can change the amount of bits per second. I'm using the value 1 million just because it's giving me consistent values to read. And so once I get those values, then I can cross-reference them and see what it's trying to send out. I know that when it sends code in order to clear the LEDs, the bytes of green, red, and blue will be the same. And so if all the bytes have the same value, that means that it's trying to clear all the LEDs. In order to check whether it's turned on, the red will have a different byte from the green and the blue. And so if there's any instance where the red is different from the green and the blue, that means that it's trying to turn on the LEDs. And so a signal over here is read as power. A more analog way in order to read the values would be just to measure the light intensity. And so here I have the same module used for the daylight sensor. There's just a voltage divider. And so when light hits the photoresistor, then it will turn on this MOSFET and turn on this LED in here. It's a little hard to see since it's using a three volt battery instead of a five volt. The way I suggest you get a reading out would be the photoresistor, just because it's pretty intimidating to try and get the signal read through a microcontroller and get everything just right. There are addressable LEDs which have a different clock that you can use. And so instead of three pins, it uses four pins and you can specify the clock and slow everything down in order for another microcontroller to read the data outputted. Since the design already is only able to send in one direction, you can use a second pin for the modular block in order to send that clock around. I tried to make the signal go in multiple directions, but no matter what I tried, I wasn't able to get it to work. For a design that goes in multiple directions, I just recommend using the shocky diodes. Although it can only go one way, it is able to still branch off into new places. And so we're moving over here. You can see that it branches off. And so there's a higher intensity over here than there was before. And the light level over here begins at 15, goes 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. And over here, the microcontroller is still able to read correctly. And so when it's off, it closes. And when it's on, it opens. Again, it can be pretty finicky. And so you can see here, it feels like it goes off a little bit more often. Although this design has a lot of disadvantages, the major advantage is being able to show different calibrations using a microcontroller. When using the shock key redstone dust version, the microcontroller's pulse width modulation went throughout all the LEDs. So there wasn't a cutoff of the LEDs. It would just lower the brightness. Using this method, I'm able to use a comparator and also create the skulk sensor and actually show each individual LED light up. 
Now the whole circuit is being powered over here under this door. So opening it up, to reveal the micro servo for the door. And in here is a battery pack. This time I'm using a four AAA rechargeable batteries for a total of 4.8 volts. So it is more consistent, closer it is to five volts. The microcontroller reads the data being outputted into this blue wire here and into the RX pin of the microcontroller. Over here in this block is the other microcontroller that's sending out the data. So pin three sends data out into the LEDs and pin two waits for a ground potential. So when I flick this lever, then it connects down to ground and using the input pull up of the microcontroller, it's able to show that as a low value and when it's flicked back up, then it's able to show it as a high value. So that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, as always, please let me know and thank you for watching.